Hello YouTube, I'm John and this is the Mask Face Journal. Today I'm going to talk to you about a certain wall crawler. Do you like Spider-Man? Do you have this inexplicable appreciation for the character despite not a lot of great stories in the last few years, yet still want to read Spider-Man-like stories? I would like to plead the case for you to pick up and read Spider-Girl. If you already have, that is great. But if you haven't been interested or heard of her before, or only know her through the Spider-Verse event, this series builds on the status quo of 90s Spider-Man and extrapolate an alternate future universe from that. Clone Saga and all. That might not sound like the greatest pitch, but it actually kind of makes that story more interesting. It's very much in the spirit of classic Spider-Man stories, but with a female lead character. The comic is quite different from the current trend of female-led superhero comics in that it's not so much cute and quirky as it is drama-based, with actions and consequences and actual character motivations. Not that there is necessarily anything wrong with cute and quirky, but nowadays it's kind of all you're gonna get. The character started out as a one-shot in What If Volume 2, Issue 105, written by Tom DeFalco and drawn by Ron Friends. That later span off into a series, Spider-Girl, that ran for 100 issue before being cancelled and reborn as Amazing Spider-Girl, that ran for an additional 30 issues. After that, her adventures became a backup feature under the monkier Spectacular Spider-Girl. Now that you know all that dry stuff, who is Spider-Girl? Short answer, she's the daughter of Mary Jane and Peter Parker. Her name is May Mayday Parker, and the series follows her adventures as she tries to balance high school life with being a superhero. The main differences between her and her father is in their motivation for fighting crime. While her father did it out of guilt, she first dons the spandex to protect her family. She continues her superheroics because she has been raised on the lesson with great power must also come great responsibility, something she has heard so much growing up that is practically a family joke, and not having to understand it through tragedy. Another difference between her and her father is that she is not a social outcast in high school, which makes the balancing act of superheroing and having a social life all the more difficult. This heavier focus on friends and family replaces the money woes often seen in Spider-Man stories. When it comes to legacy characters, a lot of the time the new character inherits the villains of the predecessor. This is also the case here to a certain degree, with Kingpin, Green Goblin and 90s men as Black Tarantula being noteworthy early examples. I would not say that the legacy villains are her main antagonists though, as the series produces plenty of new original villains as well as antagonistic allies in a whole Marvel Universe 15 years down the line if all series had ended in 1998, with an Avengers team. Fantastic Five and the X People. All in all, I have a lot of love for this series. It's not perfect, some things are dated, some choices in storytelling are not what I wish for, and sometimes the art is not great. But that is something you're always going to have when a series is 100 plus issues long. If you're having a hankering for something like classic Spider Man, consider picking this up. Did you enjoy this video? Great! Like, comment, and subscribe. Hated it? Disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. Me, I'm out of here.